I tried carnivore with the fruit and honey and all that, and I just could gorge myself and gorge myself. I didn't do well on that. If I've ever just done meat, I actually feel pretty good, I confess. But I'm an omnivore. Wait, so you yeah. gorge yourself on fruit and honey? Is so, that what you're doing? So I've done just meat. And I mm -hmm. felt pretty good to great. I mean, you feel lighter, you definitely lose weight, you're holding less water. What helps people with things like the carnivore diet or something like that, what helps them is with satiety. Like there's something about carbohydrates. It's yeah. a, they're so good. You want to keep eating them. Like if I have a steak by itself, I eat the steak and I'm good. But if there's like lobster mashed potatoes or fries sitting there i keep going and that's like an extra thousand calories at least well so part of that is the blood sugar response some mm -hmm. people will say why do i crave something sweet after a big meal that should make no sense right well that's a blood sugar increase but the other reason is your your gut has neurons in it those neurons signal to the dopamine centers in your brain and those neurons are looking for basically three things they want amino acids we are basically amino acid foraging machines, fatty acids, because fats are good for us too, and sugar. And when you get enough steak, you're getting enough amino acids and fatty acids, and that signal is sent to your brain and a pathway shuts down that says, I need more. The moment you throw in a cookie after that steak, all of a sudden your appetite goes, yeah. and it's not blood sugar, or at least not blood sugar alone. It's those neurons in your gut going, Oh, there's sugar coming into my system. Get more of that because mm. it's an evolutionary conserved system designed to get you more resources. So this is why if you look at your gut brain axis as, yes, there's a microbiome and that's important too. But if you think about it as it's sensing things independent of taste, it's actually looking for specific nutrients. Then I think if people forage most for high quality protein and high quality fats, it's kind of obvious that that's the best way to, to build the, the basis of your diet. Mm. And then carbohydrates on a kind of as needed basis, yeah. right? If you're doing a lot of weight training, depleting glycogen, et cetera. So that's where I think there's a place for lower zero carbohydrate diets. Um, I tried carnivore with the fruit and honey and all that, and I just could gorge myself and gorge myself. I didn't do well on that. If I've ever just done meat, I actually feel pretty good, I confess. But I'm an omnivore. Wait, so you yeah. gorge yourself on fruit and honey? Is so, that what you're doing? So I've done just meat, and I mm -hmm. felt pretty good to great. I mean, you feel lighter, you definitely lose weight, you're holding less water. I found it hard to train really hard with the weights. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And so I asked Paul Saladino, I said, I want to bring in some uh, rice and oatmeal here because I'm, I'm suffering in the gym and that's my, f I love working out. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, do fruit and honey in addition to that. So I added in fruit, non-pasteurized cheese and honey the way they do that. And sorry, Paul, for me, all it did was just send my appetite through the roof. I was just like gorging myself with cheese and fruit and meat all the time. I didn't feel well and I still couldn't train well. So for me, what works best is mostly quality proteins and quality fats and I get some I eat a bit of butter and saturated but fats is there but any, also uh, carbohydrates is there any yeah. yeah is there any evidence that rice is bad for you no I judge things on you know obviously on science but also on how I feel after I eat them and when I eat pasta I feel like I ate a brick I feel like I ate like a uh, paste how much like pasta are we sitting. talking I eat a lot yeah. I'm a glutton I, I mean uh, I like a big bowl of spaghetti with like sausage and meatball oh so good I love it oh I, lasagna I, I love it but if but you train point, hard it should be is, fun right I don't feel like that with rice Hmm. When I have rice, like say if I have like a steak and some rice, I eat the rice and even I'll feel full, I feel good, but I do not feel like, oh, I don't feel terrible. And hmm. it seems to give me energy for workouts. The problem that I had with pure carnivore was that I work out very hard. And when I work out very hard on pure carnivore, I was struggling. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it. Yeah, when I added fruit though, I didn't have the same problem that you had. Um, where it's like that's like most of my diet like you know we're talking like 90 percent 90 percent of my diet is just meat and fruit that's 90 percent of my diet i i'll eat a salad if i feel like eating a salad i enjoy salads but i always make sure that i'm only putting uh, olive oil and balsamic vinaigrette that's all i use i don't use like bullshit salad dressings because they're all filled with seed oils and sugar yeah it's all garbage yeah. it's like it's so many people think they're eating well and like my god you have 500 calories of fuck nonsense on your salad that yeah. you know and it's like it's not good for you yeah you but, and i eat pretty similar i do eat rice oatmeal typically after i train and in the evening i like some carbohydrates for my meal because it helps me sleep you know lane's made it very clear by pointing out the data that carbohydrates aren't going to disrupt your ability to burn fat right it's about keeping cal calories in yeah, it's calories in calories, calories out yeah. lane is very specific about that yeah. and i think he's absolutely right 
you know, the, there's so many people that have these ideas that if you eat carnivore, you burn fat because of, oh, you eat less calories. Yeah. You get satisfied quicker, you eat less calories. Well, and, I, I have one idea that I'm hoping someone will test, which is when you're on a low carbohydrate diet or you're doing intermittent fasting, one thing that's very clear is that your adrenaline and nor noradrenaline, epinephrine levels are higher. And one of the things that you see is that people are more alert, and when they're more alert, they move more. And that brings us back to NEAT, this mm. non-exercise-induced thermogenesis. As you said, you eat a big bowl of pasta, and it tends to make you feel kind of sedentary. Oh, yeah. Whereas when you just eat meat, you can go, go, go. Yeah. I, I um, uh, ran into Jordan Peterson not that long ago, and you know he's really big. He does three steaks a day, and he, not just for his age. He, he looks very fit. And he feels strong. Now, I, I don't know what he's doing in the realm of training. I don't training. think he lifts weights. I exactly. So yeah. I don't think he has to replenish glycogen the same way many yeah. people do. But I think for people who are doing mostly cardiovascular exercise, some resistance training, I think he does some. The, the carnivore thing may work very well. But I think that also just being a mobile, moving person. And, you know, this thing about NEAT was discovered because they noted that people that were very thin tend to move a lot. It was a reverse – it was kind of correlation in both directions, whereas people who are larger tend to be pretty sedentary, and they move slower. I think the, one of the best examples online, at least, of someone who's on a pure carnivore diet who's very active is Sean Baker. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and Sean Baker is just – I mean, he regularly posts his workouts. He's 56 years old. I mean, he's doing heavy deadlifts, and he he holds world records for rowing. I mean, he's like a serious power-based athlete who only eats steak. Mm -hmm. That's all he eats. He doesn't incorporate organs. He doesn't do anything else. I mean, I don't know if he's taking any vitamins or minerals, but I mean... Most of what that guy eats is steak. He looks he looks super it's fit. Great, he's yeah. very fit. I know a number of um, uh, police officers and firefighters are doing that now because a lot of their job, especially police officers, is sedentary, and then it's go go go. Mm -hmm. um, and they they seem to like that. There's a study on intermittent fasting that was done by Sachin Panda's lab out of the Salk on firefighters that because their schedules are crazy, and that being a night owl and then swing shifts is just terrible wreaks havoc on your metabolic system. I mean, it's just one of the quickest ways to make yourself ill, but we need shift workers, right? So the intermittent fasting and these more, let's just call them elimination diets, where it's mainly carnivore, really help them, those communities stay fitter and more active. There's a guy on Instagram, I, I, don't, I don't know his name, but I love his police posts. He has, he shows yes, yeah. amazing. Yeah, I follow him. And he sometimes puts up this post. I love these ones. Uh, I do see how intense that job is and like, wow. And then, but he'll post like supplements and it's a steak. You know, he's just mm -hmm. all about protein training and the job. Yeah. You know, it's clear that for people that need to be active or just or, or who are sitting a ton that the carnivore diet might be a great thing. And now I'm not talking about the carnivore fruit honey thing. Again, apologies, Paul. I'm not saying that's bad, but these are people who are mainly just doing meat yeah. and they just feel like their appetite is more regular. And cops, you kind of see it's a binary distribution. They're either really fit or they're really unfit. Yeah. And it, and listen, it's got to be an incredibly hard job. Firefighters, the fitness part it seems a little bit more aligned to like working out at the station and things like that. In any case, um, they have a lot more downtime. They have a lot more downtime. Yeah. yeah. 